Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Okay, starting the recording. And I'm going to start going live on Facebook. Let's see if it works today. <laughs> on page. Nerd Enterprise. Next. All right, and I did come prepared this time with the title already written out so I can just copy and paste it. I love when I make it easy for myself. Ooh, and one more thing. Ugh. <clears throat> okay, I think it finally went live. Um, one second. Gonna grab the live feed. Kill the echo. Into the Facebook group. Oops. Yeah. Where's my Evernote? Almost there. Okay, perfect. We're live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. (laughs) Happy Friday. Flex your muscles. I'm going to let a few more people in. Apparently, I've stumbled onto a popular topic today. Bring on Laura Sab. We've got people chiming in in the chat. Oh my God, it's Adam. Adam's here. And Adam's on fire this week. How many blog posts? Two or three? And don't forget to unmute before you answer. Three. Three. Now, all right, so you beat me. <laughs> you beat me this week. That's well, awesome. Well, I mean, like I said, it was my rollout week. So I'm like, if, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to get a lot of momentum going. Right. And uh, next week, I'm going to start video. That's why I've been kind of getting ready with all these video questions and stuff. So I'll be doing a blog post and a video a week. And then when I get caught up on my all my stuff that I'm doing in terms of production, I'll be doing like kind of rotating, doing either two videos, two videos a week in a blog or two blogs in a video, depending on my goal is to have 30 blog posts and 25 videos by end of year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have a Vimeo account yet or just YouTube? I, don't, I just use YouTube, so I don't know how to properly use Vimeo in terms of how I would market it because I'll be putting it on YouTube anyway? I would put them in both places and I'll tell you why. Because, well, (laughs) first of all, Vimeo is sort of the more professional place for putting videos up and especially when you want to embed them on your site. If you notice on my site, I embed them all from Vimeo, not YouTube. I put them on YouTube and I link back to my blog and I put the link directly to the blog that has that video embedded in it in the description of the video on YouTube. But Vimeo is the one whose embed code I'm using on my blog. It just looks cleaner, it looks nicer. But here's the other thing. Vimeo is a professional network. You're gonna pay for a pro account. It's gonna be like $200 a year. But A, they have much better monetization options on Vimeo compared yeah, to what you like, I, I didn't even know Vimeo was, oh, because of the like, course content? Because you can do all kinds of things with videos on there. You can charge per video. You can do a pay-per-view video, or you can let people rent a video for a day or a month. It has all kinds of stuff built in. But here's the real kicker that I wanted to mention, and it's actually very much fresh and, and top of mind as of this morning, because when I woke up this morning, I came to my desk, and I picked up my mobile device, And I had some messages from Hector Garcia in Facebook Messenger telling me that YouTube closed his account down. Just like that. What the what? So it sounds like it's under review. They're questioning something about (laughs) it. They did this to me years ago. And they came back 
and they just demonetized my content. They've been doing a lot of that lately. They've been doing a lot of that for years. That's the whole problem with well, YouTube. More and more like recent in recent months in the last year specifically. I, I remember when Chris Perillo got demonetized on YouTube and that's when he went to Patreon and started using Patreon as his way of monetizing his content. Um, the thing is they don't tell you what's wrong. They don't give you a chance to cure the defect. They just say, oh, sorry, we think you're a threat to our advertisers or whatever the language is you know, of the week on the memo that they send out. And that's it. So A, make sure you have all your video content backed up somewhere, right? Don't assume ever that you never need that video again. I have everything backed up on box.com. And the reason for box specifically is for 75 bucks a month, I get unlimited total storage and bandwidth. So I can upload as much as I want and I, and I, it can accumulate to. So I can, put down, I can put down share file cause I use share file. As long as it's unlimited. Cause the problem is the video files are huge. So if you, if you have a limit, then you're going to hit that limit. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think Sharefile, if you, you, you may be on one of their plans more recently, they rolled out plans that were unlimited in terms of total storage. I forget if it's total bandwidth as well. Yeah. But yeah, I was shocked. I, and I told Hector, I said, I would be so pissed right now. Cause oh, yeah. you've got like 700 videos. Yeah. Yeah. Same as me. So, but I also, every video that I upload to YouTube, I also upload to Vimeo and I also have it backed up on box.com. What's the process for Camtasia when you're doing that, when you do multi-formats? Well, when I produce a video from Camtasia, I produce it to a local folder. I never produce it directly to the CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. Mm -hmm. And so, I, yeah, and you have to render it to a local folder that's not in a shared service, kind of like how you can't have a live QuickBooks file in a Dropbox service. You can't render, your, your video will get corrupted in some cases and I learned this the hard way, I rendered a video and the MP4 file never got produced. <laughs> it said it was produced, but it was nowhere to be found. And then I researched the issue and found that it was because I was trying to share, I was trying to uh, process it directly to, uh, I think it was Dropbox at that time. So <clears throat> just like QuickBooks, you have to produce to a local folder. And then of course, once it's produced, I copy it over into, you know, like I said, box.com in my case is where they usually wind up. Um, or now where they always wind up. So, and th so then once you've got that produced, then it's just, you know, you drag it up to YouTube, you drag it up to Vimeo, you know, separate okay. process. So you're basically just dragging the local files to each individual service. Yeah. I mean, Vimeo has a cool integration with Dropbox where you can designate that a particular Dropbox folder is your Vimeo folder. And anytime you drop a video in there, it will automatically upload and push it into Vimeo. But if you end up moving those videos in Dropbox to a different location, you'll get a warning that it could cause diminished quality. So again, I defer to just directly uploading right to the content delivery network that I want it. And there's other content delivery networks, by the way, that shouldn't be ignored. Camtasia has its own screencast.com, right? So that's another place to, uh, you know, to upload your videos. There's something called Daily Motion that I had looked at some years ago. And the thing of it is, you never know which sort of you know, uh, niche audience you might find on one of these platforms, right? So mm -hmm. it's probably worth putting them up in multiple places and actually starting to see where you might get traction for a particular subject or just for, you you know, for your video content in general. Well, the whole thing for me is I've been doing like SEO research like crazy, like whenever I have spare time, whenever I want, I'm just studying the heck out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Like I, at one point I was like so obsessed with this thing called backlinks, which is like going to blog posts or guest blogging or doing all that stuff like going to forums and putting you know, your website and embedding it or asking people in the industry if you hey can you link back to my site and blah 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 right but the whole thing is is I, I got turned on to these guys on youtube and the whole thing is, is like if they say you can you create good content google's goal is to find, give people the answers they're looking for yeah so give good authoritative content you know good blogs like 1900 words um, yep. things like that i and also learned recently that youtube favors videos that are more than 30 minutes long Really? Yep. For coming up in related content searches. That was something I learned from Chris Brogan recently, which I was surprised about because you'll find that the typical drop off time from people watching your videos is going to be somewhere between three and five minutes. Right. But YouTube, YouTube, it's like, it's hungry for content. It wants you to feed it. So, yes. um, 
the whole thing with the content is that once you create that content, it's going to create its own organic links just by the nature of the content. Right. And you want to be careful about these quote unquote backlink services because Google's getting smart about that too. Yeah. And they don't give that as much credit as they used to because they know the games that people play and then they write algorithms to find out when people are playing those games. And then your, you know, and then your, your page rankings will actually go down. Sometimes actually hurt you and that's the thing because they're snuffing out and they're constantly updating that algorithm and people are like well and the people like some people are like well how can we manipulate the algorithm to benefit us but where the question should be is let's just create content exactly that, that is going to like let's not even worry about that stuff and create content that's really good that people want to see yeah it'll take care of itself yeah exactly just create good content that people are interested in and here's the thing you know you can spend a lot of time trying to do research to see oh what are people searching for what do they want you know and try and come up with ideas that way and i don't think that's such a great idea excuse me i think that the way to do it and i'm gonna start getting into you know what i had sort of outlined for today because it, this actually gets us there i think that the way to do it is to just write let first of all start with writing okay because i know some of you have talked to and, and you've told me i'm not that comfortable you know turning the camera on fine don't you don't need the camera in fact i'd encourage you not to use the camera just pull up camtasia and record your screen if you're ready to do videos but not ready to put your face on camera it's not necessary in fact i would even argue especially in the beginning when you're just learning how to edit video you're creating more work for yourself by putting your image in there so leave it out Make sure your job easier. As you get more comfortable, then you can incorporate turning on your webcam or like I do more and more these days when I'm feeling motivated, you know, I'll, I'll pull up my DSR and run a, a, you know, a live action feed and then splice it into the, in, you know, and, transition. and just, and just yeah. the trial runs, create like a five minute video and edit it and just do, you know, every time you edit it differently, the process is going to get more simpler and faster. Yeah. Yep, because you'll just get more and more comfortable with it, and you'll get better and better at it, and you'll start learning what you like and what you don't like. And it's really that simple. And all you need really to know as far as editing goes in the beginning, especially because our platform is an educational platform, right? We're going to teach people stuff, which means we're going to want to share our screens and share software. Um, and I'm just uh, – uh, Matthew's saying backlinks help you link quality content between different websites when done correctly. But the key there, Matthew, and feel free to unmute and talk. You don't have to use the chat. Um, the key there is those backlinks have to come, like Google ranks the sites and, and the sources of those backlinks. If I've got somebody linking to me who has no traffic, it's not going to help me. Google's not going to care. Now, if I have Intuit linking back to me, that's going to be incredibly useful because Intuit probably has a ton of traffic, right? <clears throat> so it's, it matters where those backlinks are coming from. Yeah, there's a great service. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to probably name it wrong, but Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S, that will help you research all the backlinks to your website. And you can look at the domain ranking as well of the different websites. because Put the link in the chat. I will. Um, what, what I've had an issue with that I've been trying to solve is I'll have random sites backlink from my pictures. Um, so there's <laughs> what they call no follow and do uh, and follow, mm -hmm. which will stop the Google bots from actually taking that track to the next site. And they're doing that to, to steal your backlink juice. Right. Um, the, with Google, especially like you've got Google, YouTube, um, any of the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, they all have very high domain ranking. So when you put those on, it starts to raise your domain ranking up a little bit. But then actually, if all of us, we linked back and forth between each other's blogs for quality content that's related, that would all help all of us do better just by doing that. Right. Google yeah. has a job, like I think you said earlier, Adam, of trying to deliver the most relevant results when somebody's searching for something. So what Google is doing is it's going through all the web pages out there on the web, and it's trying and it's looking at a page and it's looking at the content and it can even listen to the audio tracks of a video now and it's listening for keywords and it's trying to decide all right here's a page with content about some subject what subject matter is this page an authority on that's what it's really trying to determine what subject is this page or is this video an authority on that's why i think almost before you get into backlinks and all this the more important thing is focusing on generating really good content that's right. structured properly so that when I'm looking for something, you're going to show up in the search results, right? And so let me go through my outline a little bit here that I prepared. Um, 
because I want to back up a little bit, first of all, because I know we have some people here who have yet to produce a single, their first piece of content, and then others like Adam who are really getting into it now and have produced a lot, and then people like Matthew who have been producing content for a while now, right? <clears throat> and then there's Laura who plays pickleball. One. And Greg. And Laura plays pickleball. And she writes about pickleball. <laughs> So, all right, first of all, <clears throat> and Hector's going to get mad at me when he hears me say this, but I think it's important to be said, for, and, and it's important for the right context, don't worry about the equipment just yet, especially if you're new. Hector has put a lot of great resources together, helping you find really good equipment for your audio, for you know, different kinds of cameras, different, you know, and he's really done a great job of that. But for somebody who's new just starting out, first of all, like I said, don't even worry about turning on your camera. And, and, and with that in mind, you don't need to worry about any camera equipment, right? Even audio-wise, you just need a decent mic. And focus on audio before video, right? Because even if you do a video, like my, my webcam was like 100 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I have a Microsoft Live Cam, which used to be around 100 Now it's gotten much cheaper. So webcams are ridiculously cheap. Um, even this mic that I'm using now, which is a radio quality, like studio quality microphone and headset by Audio-Technica, and you have to get a mixing board with it, right? So that it can connect to a computer because again, it's not really made for a computer. It's made for a studio, but it, it, it's USB plug and play basically. Um, and still the cost wasn't very much between the headset and I had to get a little Y adapter for the two channels and the mixer itself, it was about $200. And then I got this, I got this thing that helps. And then, and Adam's got a pop filter. And then I got that mic, that little thing that goes over the, um, the Yeti, the black cushion. Okay. So, yeah. So like this pop. boom that I have on my headset has a built-in pop Ooh. filter and it's okay. got the foam thing on it already. And, okay. and the Yeti Blue is a great mic, right? Just to get good audio. The trick is keep it close and use the cardioid setting, which is the one that looks kind of like a heart, right? Or and gives the very white voice. What's that? And it gives you a very white voice, the deeper voice as soon as you get closer to it. Right, right. No, and you want to be close, especially with the Yeti, because otherwise it'll pick up more background noise. Cardioid setting looks like a little heart. Sometimes I joke that it looks like a little tushy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that's the setting you want. When you get the mic, it has – take the time to look at the manual because it explains the different settings and what they're for. Because there's one setting that's good if you have somebody in the room with you on the other side of the mic where it will pick up the sound from, you know, all around. That's omnidirectional, right? And then the cardioid is just from one side. And I don't have my Yeti here anymore now that I've got this. But a lot of people think they need to talk into the top of the mic, which is incorrect. You talk into the side of the mic the side that's got the Yeti symbol on it so that that setting where you do set it on cardioid is actually in the back. That's the side you want to be talking into because that's the side it's trying to grab the audio from. Okay, so very, very important about that. But realistically, equipment-wise, software-wise, all you need is the Yeti Blue Mic and Camtasia. And you have everything you need right there and then to get started making videos. You need nothing more than that. You know, Seth, another good resource for people just starting to do it and they want to put their face on it is Loom. If you haven't used, um, I think the website is Use Loom. I'll put the link in. Uh, like you're saying, when I started doing my videos, I was never on it because I didn't feel comfortable with it. It's only been the last couple of months I started to put my face out there with it because I realized I need to try to connect and uh, build the brand of me, if you will, at the same time. So. Uh, Loom helps you do that. You can have, you can choose when you're recording your desktop if you want your picture shown or not. It's pretty neat. Right. See, I had an advantage starting out because before I got into accounting, I actually was doing some acting. Plus, I'm an egomaniac and I love myself, so I love turning on the camera, you know. So there's that. We love you too, Seth. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Um, so, so again, equipment-wise, get the mic, right? Get the Yeti Blue mic and get a... Uh, a copy of Camtasia, a licensed copy installed on your computer. Uh, for Max, is also ScreenFlow, which I understand is very good, as opposed, instead of Camtasia. I guess some people have said that Cam, the Mac version of Camtasia is not as good as the PC version. I don't know. But the thing now is, with Camtasia, the PC and Mac files are now compatible. They didn't used to be. So if you're going to collaborate with somebody on videos, then you definitely want to use Camtasia. Right, because you can produce some of the video on a Mac and some on a PC, and then somebody can edit it all together and make one big, beautiful video. Okay, and then the only other thing you'll need in order to get started is 
Google Docs, right? Or Microsoft Word, something to write in, right? And, and I, you know, I've gone back and forth over the years. I used to bang out the videos first and write the content later. And that was because I was just really excited and anxious to just get the subject matter done. I didn't really care too much about the written part. And then I started learning about SEO and, you know, how important that was. And I also found that by writing it out first, I was much more focused. I didn't, I didn't digress too much. I didn't go off. I didn't embellish, really. Because as experts in our subject matter, we tend to want to do that because we get excited about what we're talking about. Which is why, by the way, once you get started creating content, it's going to become like addicting. Everybody that I know who's done it has had that experience where once they kind of start, it's like all they want to do is produce content. Yeah, that was, it was crazy this week, bro. I was like, damn, I, I, after I got to my third one, I'm like, I got two more I can do right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Exactly. Because I have a list of like 60 topics that I made you know, before I started even writing. I'm like, I'm just going to outline everything I can think of. Yeah. Yep. And that's the other thing. I'm going to come to that in a few minutes for like tools for capturing ideas. I've got a list for you on that. Um, and a few people asked when they registered, I was looking at the questions, which I expected and I was prepared for how, where do you go to get ideas? So we're going to go through all of that over the next few minutes here. Um, but really just get, get open up a Google Doc. And what I love about Google Docs, of course, is it's seamless. And I'll share a funny and perhaps somewhat crass story with you on the subject. But I was sitting here one day writing something and I was really into it. And I was writing and I was like, oh, my God. But all of a sudden I had to go to the bathroom really badly. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? I don't want to lose my train of thought. But it wasn't a hard solution. I, I literally grabbed my mobile device went in there and opened up the document on my mobile device and I was able to continue right there. That's the beauty of it. And I say that to a little bit to get your attention, but also because the point is you can do this anywhere and on the go, right? I, I, I've, I've wrote a blog post about how I wrote a blog post while I was sitting waiting to get my hair cut one day, right? And sometimes I'll just sketch out ideas because I'll literally be looking around somewhere when I'm out and about. I'll look at some stores and all of a sudden seeing I saw a, 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 an accounting practice called M&M &M Accounting. And that gave me some funny ideas about like candy and accounting and, you know, anyway. So sometimes I'll just, wherever I am, I'll sit down and I'll sketch out some ideas. Um, so just start with Google Docs. It makes it so easy. And there's you other programs. You can do a tool also, can't you? What's that? Doesn't Google Docs uh, do dictation to where you could literally like... Have well, you can use your voice to text that's built into your mobile device. In fact, when I'd broken my left shoulder... I was doing everything that way. I, I pinned a Google Doc to the home screen of my mobile, and I would just voice dictate there, and then I would go onto my browser version of that document, copy and paste and paste it into an email or paste it into a text message or wherever I needed that text to go. I, I lived that way for several for, for like six weeks while my arm was in a sling because I couldn't type. <laughs> Smart. So, you know, and, it's, and it works, and you just have to clean it up a little bit. That's all. My business partner does all of his emails that way. He literally keeps a Google Docs open. He will talk to the computer all day long, and then he just cleans it up, copy, paste, boom, puts it in. Yeah. Great. It's arguable that that's a much faster way to get your ideas down. You know, um, it just depends. I mean, for blog content, I'd recommend taking the time to write it out in the long form. And I'm going to go through the process also this morning of how I actually do it. And I'm going to explain to you where you can go to get a very detailed walkthrough. Of, of how I do it literally from start to finish referencing a specific blog post that I used as the example while I went through it that's now live on my on my blog so so you know just use Google Docs and just start writing and because I, I was talking to somebody and I think we almost get locked into the thinking that like somehow if I write it I'm obligated to publish it <laughs> but you're not right if you write something and you hate it then don't publish it start over but I was talking with somebody it was you, Matthew, the other night at our meetup that you said you keep a file of stuff that you've written that you didn't use. And I told you there's actually a term for that in the writing world, which is it's called a swipe file. So all the yeah, stuff that you being, write, go ahead. I thought it was just being an electronic hoarder. I didn't realize right. it was like. No, that's a thing. And it's often suggested to keep a swipe file. So ideas that you get, or maybe you've written something, but you hated it, but you know the idea of it is good. So you save it in a swipe file. And if you're using Google Docs, just create a folder, call it your swipe file and have different documents in there or have one big document with all of it, you know, because you'll go back and, and grab some of that stuff and use it, right? 
So, and I've done that a lot, you know, where I'm like, you know, I remember writing about this subject and I remember that I didn't use it. Let me go to my swipe file and you'll just grab maybe like a paragraph or two out of it, bring it over into what you're currently writing and clean it up, you know, make it fit the context of whatever you're actually writing at this point, right? So really just the best advice I can give people uh, is just start writing, just write something, right? Write whatever's on your mind. And, uh, you know, I said it before, I'll say it again. Um, you don't have to publish your first piece if you don't want to. But the sooner you start writing, the more you'll want to write. And then the better you'll get at writing. Writing is not something people are born with. It's something, it's a skill. You practice at it, right? I was talking with somebody the other, also at our meetup, which was awesome, by the way. Um, and we were talking about writing specifically. And I said, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the word practice. You know what the definition of the word practice is? I actually looked it up once. And the definition of the word practice is simply to do something over and over and over again, right? And anytime you have a skill that you want to improve, then all you have to do is practice at it. Do it over and over again. That's why professional athletes are constantly practicing for hours and hours and hours a day, right? Because that's how they get better. That's how they improve their skills. Just do it over and over again. The more you write, the better you get. And also, I'm going to cover a tool that I use in my blog that helps me optimize my content, which also has dramatically improved my own writing. And I'll explain more about that in a few minutes. But for now, just start writing. And again, as far as ideas go, write from the heart. Write about what gets you excited. Write about what you're passionate about. If you, you know, like this week on our 97 and Up call on Tuesday, somebody asked me a very specific question about a use case where they needed to pull a, an account number apart and stick an extra digit in there. And in our call, I showed them how using a few simple formulas in Excel, you can break the number up insert the digit that because she wanted to stick either a zero or a one into the account number and turn it from a four digit number to a five. So using a left nut formula and a right formula, you're able to pull it apart. Then you have a column for the digit you want to stick in. Then you use a concatenate formula to bring it all back together. I showed her how to do that. And then and a lot of people said, Oh my God, that was like the best takeaway from the whole thing. So now I know I need to do a video on that right? Because if they liked it, then others are going to like it too. And the bottom line is if there's a subject that you're hot on, just write about it because your enthusiasm is going to come across in whatever form of content you're producing if you're excited about it. And that's going to rub off on other people. I mean, you know, many times I get feedback from people saying one of the reasons they like my videos is because they can tell I love what I'm doing. They can tell that I'm really passionate about it. But forget passion, just love what you're doing and that's going to rub off on people. And that's going to be what I call a program of attraction, right? If I really love what I'm doing and, I'm, and, and it's authentic and real and I'm not just doing it because I, wanna, I need to make money, but I'm doing it because I really love it, that's going to draw people in. That's going to attract people. They're going to want to be a part of that right? And it's, I just believe very strongly and deeply that that's the way life works, right? If I'm really authentic and deep with what I'm doing, then people are going to be attracted to that. If I'm doing it because I'm just trying to make money and get one over on people, they're going to, that's going to rub people the wrong way. They're going to pick up on that even if just subconsciously. So, so just start writing and you don't have to publish if you don't love it. Uh, but the sooner you start writing, the more you'll want to write and, and the better you'll get at it. I promise you that. And then don't worry about what others want to read, right? Write about what you love, and I guarantee there will be others that love the same things that you do. Because you don't need to get millions and millions. Like, I know Hector sometimes likes to, you know, he shares this, that he goes through YouTube to see what some of the more popular videos are from the more popular people, and he wants to mimic that. And that's all fine and good, but he, what he's doing is he's going for the big numbers. My suggestion is don't go for the big numbers. Go for the niche, the small groups, the people who are going to become diehards. You'll get fewer people, but like Seth Godin shares, you don't need a million followers. You need a thousand followers who are going to each tell a thousand more people about you. And that's how you reach a million people, right? And the way you're going to get a thousand followers instead of a million is by focusing on a narrow range of topics based on things that you really love. That's what's going to build the audience, the tribe that you really want, that you want, you know, and that's the most important thing. So let's talk about where ideas come from. And I sort of alluded to this earlier. Think about what you did this week that you really enjoyed, something you did for a client this week. Like I just described what I did in our call, right? Each of you probably has your own version of that. Something that went on this week, something you did for a client that you're like, you know what? That client loved what I did. I loved what I did for them. I did that thing that just made their life so much easier this week. 
you know, I've got entire courses built on that basis. I have a course called Remarkable Reports for Bookkeepers. And it was based on a process I developed for a client who told me point blank, he says, I don't want to go into QuickBooks. I don't want to run reports, but I do want the information. I want it done in a way and a layout that makes sense to me. And so I built a series of reports that I memorized in QuickBooks, dumped it into a spreadsheet template, which I built out for him on a weekly basis. One of them was his, his check register from his bank account. And then another one was his accounts payable report. And then alongside the report that came from QuickBooks, I had a column where I'd indicate what I thought we should pay this week. And I flowed that over to the check register so he could see if we pay what we're suggesting, this is the impact on his balance. This is what he's going to have left. Really, really easy to build this and write it. And he loved it because then I would send it to him and he would go in into the AP report and change the numbers and say, no, don't pay that, pay this. And he would send it back to me with the final of this is what we're going to pay. And he loved it because it was easy for him to use. It was easy for him to follow. And so I, I did this course called Remarkable Reports for Bookkeepers, and it's on my website. And if you're one of the $25 or higher members, you have access to that course. And there's other stuff I built out on there for him too. But just to underscore that, it's not just for blog posts. It's just that's how I create content is I do something for somebody and I really enjoy it and I enjoy what it does for them and then that gets me excited and I'm like, I need to do a video on that or I need to do a course on that. So think about things that you did this week or recently that made a client really happy and that's what you should probably be writing about and producing content about. Okay, get ideas from others. If you're not already doing it, start reading. That's where I get a lot of ideas. Not to steal ideas, but write your own version. Or a rebuttal piece like this one. Let me show you something I did that was, I think, pretty damn clever, if I might say so myself. Um, so hold on. I'm going to share my screen. I want to show you something, and I'll tell you the quick story behind how this piece of content got created. So you've probably all heard me talk about Gene Marks. If you don't know who he is, Google him. He's a small business influencer. He's a CPA. He writes, he's written for the Washington Post, the New York Times. He writes for Inc. and Forbes and entrepreneur.com and all the major online business publications. He's got articles in them. And he wrote this article a while back uh, called, you know, quick, uh, what, uh, what's 15% of 129, right? And he doesn't give the answer, but he goes through and explains how it's important for business owners to know their numbers and to know certain ratios, like what's your inventory turnover, what's your receivables turnover. And he goes into this whole thing. And, and essentially the message, at least part of the message is that if you're a business owner and you're not pretty good with your numbers and you don't know your numbers, you're going to have a harder time. Not that you can't succeed, but you're going to have a harder time. That knowing these numbers and certain key numbers is going to be really important when you're running a business. I wrote this rebuttal piece. That wasn't taking him down at all. It was actually, you know, uh, complimenting him. It was complimentary for sure, but also saying, hey, if, and even if you're not good with numbers, there's some tools we can use. So I wrote this rebuttal piece called, hey, Gene Marks, quick, 15% of 129 is 19.35. And of course, I have a video demonstrating how you can have these numbers calculated in a Google sheet and very accessible on your mobile device. So when you go into that meeting, even if you're not good with numbers on calculating in your head on the fly, you can pull them up in 30 seconds and have them and be prepared for any meeting that you're going into. Now, what I did was Gene Marks has a huge following. He's got over 85,000 followers on Twitter. So guess what happened when I tweeted this out to him and I mentioned him by name? Of course, he retweeted it and commented back to me and thanked me and said, hey, great stuff, you know. And so he put my brand in front of his 85 some odd thousand followers, right? And that's a content strategy. That's, that's where you're really taking your content sort of to the next level in terms of, you know, I, now I motivated an influencer, somebody who's much more influential than I am, to put me in front of his audience, so that's one great way to, to, you know, to get an idea and put it to really good use is write something complimentary to somebody who's like who you want to be when you grow up, right? And I interviewed Gene for our Authentic Accountant podcast that's going to be launching on August 7th, and not his episode, but the podcast itself is. And I told him, I said, Gene, I want to be like you when I grow up. And you know what he said to me? Because I said specifically, I would love to be able to write for some of the publications that he gets to write for. And his response to me on that was, Seth, you just got to be persistent. In a nutshell, that's what he told me. You just have to keep pushing. You know, if you want to get into, if you know, if you want to take your writing and content production to the level that I that I would like to get to at some point when I have the time, um, 
that's what you have to do. You have to keep knocking on doors. That's essentially what he told me. That's how he got his first writing gig was he knocked on some doors and he happened to knock on the right door at the exact right time, just when they were looking for the exact kind of content that he could write. And this was many years ago. This was before we had all this internet stuff. This was for a, a paper publication that was around at, at that time where he's from in, uh, in Pennsylvania. One of the podcasts that I listen to talks about this kind of a, a concept where if you find somebody like Gene Marks that you, you can connect to, um, provide them a couple articles that's in their sphere for them to publish themselves. Like, hey, I've got some content, thought you might be able to use it. If you give it to them, it starts to become a situation where they will like ask you for more content and then you can get them to introduce you to the appropriate people inside of Forbes or whatever else it would be to get those opportunities. Um, right. And what you do with Gene is a perfect example of quality backlinks. Perfect mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Although I don't know if he linked back to me, but I know he tweeted it and shared it. <laughs> but uh, I'm just looking in the chat. So Adam says, so far I spread it all over. His Wait, did I miss a, a, a prior part to this? Mary had uh, asked where I put my content. Okay, and she says, would love to know how you take your current content and strengthen it so Google recognizes you as an influence in your area. Gross and true. Oh, I assume that was in reference to my bathroom story. <laughs> um, so Adam says, so far I can spread it all over as much as I can. When I write a blog, website, Facebook, business page, personal page, I also have a group and link it there. LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, looking into maybe also Foursquare. Does Seth have an idea video I do on those plus YouTube, Vimeo? Thanks, Seth. And may, may Instagram, Seth, do you post blogs on video to Instagram? I am starting to post blogs to Instagram. Instagram's a little tricky, though, because you don't get a live link in the post. You can put the link in there, but it's not going to be live. It can't be clicked on. If people are really motivated, maybe they'll open it up in their browser, which can be done so they can copy and paste it. So here's what I do to get around that. I will post my blog content on Instagram. And then what I do is in the post, in every post that I push on Instagram, I will make a comment referencing that people should look for the link in my Instagram profile. And my Instagram profile, I'll share my screen again and show you kind of my whole Instagram strategy on this. So if I do go to Instagram on the web, you can see my profile. This is the one live link you get to do on Instagram. You get one link that you can put in your profile, right? So notice where mine's going. It's going to a special page I created just for Instagram, right? It's nerdenterprises.com forward slash Instagram. So when people are on their mobile, they can tap over to my profile and they can tap this link and it's live and it will take them here. So there's two ways to go about this. One way requires a little bit more work, which is where if I know I'm going to post these three blog posts on Instagram that day, I will put an embed of those blog posts or a link to those blog posts here on this page so that when they tap over from the link in my profile, it'll take them to the very content that they're probably looking for because that's what they've just seen. That takes more work though because you've got to update it every day or whenever you plan on publishing to Instagram. The other way that I'm doing, that I'm presently employing because I knew this was going to be a busy week is I just put some general information up, right? And also think about what your call to action is. What do you want people to do? That's the perfect stuff to put on this page. I want more people to join my Facebook group. So that's the first thing I put in there, right? Because getting people into my Facebook group is how I get people into my community and how I get all of you all sharing with each other, which just helps me create something much bigger than me, which is the real goal of all this, right? Mm -hmm. My goal is to build a community. The community may be around me, but it's not about me. It's supposed to be much bigger than me. And that's what I always hope to create, right? And then... I also just, you know, a little self-promotion here. This is where I'm allowed to do that because I have upcoming classes at Santa Monica College and Santa Monica College pays me a percentage of the class revenue. So I want people to sign up for those classes. So if people are local in Los Angeles, I give them a link here. And this link actually takes them to another page on my site, which by the way, another SEO tip, cross links. Those are called cross links. You link from one place on your site to another because that's another way Google analyzes content is it says, if I see a lot of links with the phrase QuickBooks pointing to this one website, the idea is that there's a good chance that website is an authority on the subject of QuickBooks. Remember, that's what Google's trying to figure out all day long. Whereas, you know, what pages are an authority on the particular subjects that people are searching for? 
right? Then I promote a course here, check out my MSXL basics course. And then here for free blog content that will help you improve your accounting and bookkeeping and other processes, click here, right? So this will take them over to the blog, which is where all that stuff is that I might be sharing throughout the week. It's just not taking them do directly. You always, do you always use the phrase QuickBooks, even though we know that you are fully QuickBooks online? Do you, do you not use the abbreviation for video? I don't use abbreviations for SEO reasons. I think, I think you're always better off writing it all out for SEO. I, I used to put MS Excel, and then somebody pointed out to me that you're going to get be much better traffic and rankings writing out the words Microsoft Excel. A big well, part of SEO you. now is the is long tail keywords. So even QuickBooks versus QuickBooks Online, two different SEO terms, or how do I use QuickBooks Online is considered a search term, and that would be a whole different search also. Right. And another tip I learned along those lines, since you brought that up, Matthew, is, for, again, this came directly from Chris Brogan. Uh, he's removing the words how to from those. So it's more of a command, just use QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to show you, uh, I think I'm going to show you. Yes. Also, from what I understand, our clients don't use QBO and QuickBooks, QBDT and all of that. They call no. it QuickBooks. Well, yeah, because they don't know what that means. They're not used to our lingo, and remember, that's who you're writing for. So, yes, excellent point. And that, that's a good reason probably why Google prefers written out things. In fact, I've been telling people lately more because I've seen it more lately for whatever reason, or maybe I've just been noticing it more, that you know, when we use an acronym, it's important to explain what that acronym stands for, especially like take a setting like this. Let's say one of us is sitting here and I've used an acronym and somebody's sitting there and they have no clue what that acronym means because they've never heard it before. And it's going to be embarrassing to ask because they're going to feel dumb, which by the way, don't ever feel dumb. Ask what it means. I, I've learned to just do that. I've learned to be okay feeling dumb because this way I don't, I don't walk around in the dark. So and not long ago, somebody in our co-working space that I go to, um, you know, said, he said, oh, you guys are creating some FOMO over here. And I was like, what's FOMO? I just had no idea what it was. I knew it was something I probably should know what it was, but I didn't. So I was honest. I said, what's FOMO? And, uh, and he said, fear of missing out. I said, oh, okay. I get that. So Marriott wants me to clarify crosslinks versus backlinks. Backlinks are coming from another source to you. Crosslinks are within your own site, from one place in your site to another place in your site. That's a crosslink. So crosslinks are good because it means you're driving people to that location where that's going. Um, but going back to my Instagram page here, you know, and then, and so again, this is where I get to advertise. If somebody got to the point of tapping or clicking over here from Instagram, they're interested in what the hell this guy does, right? So this is your opportunity to sell some of your, you know, like whatever the most important things are that you want to kind of sell people or sign them up for that, that stuff can go here. Nobody's going to get mad at you for putting advertising or sales type content on a page like this. Excuse me. Just be aware that this longer, slower method is much better because I'm going to lose some people because they're going to click over and they're not going to see that blog post and they're going to be like, where the hell am I? Right? So normally I do the slower method and I have a daily reminder in Active Collab that reminds me, update your Instagram page. So every day I go in usually early in the morning when I'm first waking up and I, I do that update. So, or I just don't post to Instagram that day if I don't have time to do that update because it's, it's that important to me, right? Otherwise you lose people and you might even piss some people off because they can't find what they're looking for. All right. So let's uh, continue on where ideas come from. So of course your own writing is another source of ideas because what happens, Adam, you start writing about one thing and that writing itself gives ideas, gives rise to ideas for other things, correct? Yep, definitely. And even talking to people about that, about a post you did gives people ideas. Like I come in in the chat that I got two ideas from Suchi because I was, I think I was talking to her about a run really post and I gave her something and we were just kind of talking and she said, well, I might do, I was thinking about doing one on, you know, why to open a business account. I'm like, well, that, that's a good idea. I mean, like, can I borrow that? Cause I had another post that basically my first post answered all that stuff. The next post I was going to do. So I needed some more ideas right you know and then just listening to people on instagram or facebook or you know whatever just brings ideas to me and just because somebody else has done it doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't do it in fact you should you should do your own version of it you know how many times i've tried this but it always fails because nobody ends up doing it is i want to get a group of us to all write a blog post on the same topic 
it's interesting, first of all, to see everybody's different take. And then we can all link to one another's blog posts. So the suggestion I had a while back in our own 97 and Up group was let's all do a blog post that's sort of an introduction to QuickBooks kind, online kind of blog post. Within and that's the, the one I used as the example in my course. Sorry, Adam, go ahead. Within the next five posts, I'll have that up. Yeah, so let me know when it's up because I'll edit mine and link back to yours. You All know? right, I appreciate that. And it's, I would love to see us do that more of that kind of stuff as a community. And also, let's post about it in the Facebook group you know, the Between Wall and Main group, Matthew says, I'll do it. So let's all find, in fact, well, let's start with that one. Everybody just write your own version of an introduction to QuickBooks Online, whatever you think that should look like, right? And, and, and then just post the links in the Facebook group once yours is live, A, so we can all read it, so we can click it, so we can share it, and then let's all link back to one another's. Like I said, I'll edit mine and link back to all of yours. And I'll just, you can do it at the bottom and say, here are some other resources that will help you. Basically, like, if you like this, you're going to love these other posts, right? And I, you can even say, these are my colleagues' perspectives on the same subject. And so we're actually doing something really cool and powerful for the audience, too, because we're giving them a much bigger resource than just our own blog post and our own version. And it also speaks volumes to who you are as a person, that you're not like sort of selfishly trying to keep them from going to other people's stuff, right? It's not about us. It's about them. It's about providing a tremendous resource for the end users, for the clients, the prospects, whatever you want to call them, right? So, so um, I find with, with um, when I'm searching for something for a customer that's got a problem, there's not a lot of great videos out there for QuickBooks Online. <laughs> There's not a lot of great content out there. Some of it's really old. It's the old, you know, the old look of it too sometimes. Yeah. And that's, well, that's the, that's the problem, but that's also the beauty of QuickBooks Online is you can constantly be doing new refresher content with it because they're always changing it, right? Some people view that as a bad thing. I think it's an opportunity. And, and you're right. And I'm trying to change that, Linda, because I'm trying to get the time to do more of my own content on QuickBooks Online. I got two really nice pieces out this week, if I may say so myself. One was, uh, m my most popular video on YouTube is called Bookkeeping Basics. It's got over 400,000 views. And I just did the updated version of that, Bookkeeping Basics with QuickBooks Online. And it's a 30 minute video where I go through five transactions. I show T accounts that I've created in Google Sheets with a little mini trial balance that goes along with it. And I give people access to that uh, T account uh, Google spreadsheet for free in the post. And I also sort of addressed all the feedback I've gotten. That video that I was, that I originally did was like 10 years old. And I've had a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. People telling me, Hey, you go too fast, this and that. So I really tried to address all of that feedback, especially the negative feedback. And, you know, just, so just slow things down. And I also, if you watch the video, you'll see I make it a point at certain points in the video to say, hey, this is a good time to stop and go practice what I just showed you because you're not going to learn this by just watching. You're only going to learn this by watching a piece of it, practicing what I've just shown you, and then resuming and going on to the next part, right? So... You know, so, so that's, I, I, I'm doing a reprise of all my old content. I'm going through my own YouTube channel, searching uh, by the um, most popular, right? And I'm doing updated versions of all that stuff. And yes, QuickBooks Online is a wide open opportunity right now because it's ever changing. Justine, you said you had a technical question? Well, you're muted. Don't forget to unmute. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. So um, you might actually hear this now. So my office space is really large and getting quality sound is a problem mm -hmm. um like the ceilings i guess are 18, 15 feet maybe um so any recommendation on like soundproofing or i was looking at like soundproofing rugs but there's so many you know conflicting things out there the interesting thing th the interesting piece of advice i just recently got on that because we're trying to find the perfect space to record our podcast in and we're having mm -hmm. problems because a small room with just flat walls is very echoey. And so like Erica's mic will pick up my voice and vice versa. So what I was told because I've been researching this specifically is you, you need to have your walls just need to be uneven. Like even having artwork hanging on the walls, anything that will deflect sound other ways rather than directly off the wall will help the acoustics. And the other thing I think is even if you just grab the Yeti and bring it real close to your mouth, even sitting where you are right now, you might find makes a big difference if you're not already trying that. Yeah, I have a, I guess it's the snowball. It's the blue microphone. Okay. I don't know. It's yeah, just try maybe moving it closer if it's not already right up there, you know. Okay. Because that, that. Nothing on flooring. I mean, I think it, 
we have a lot of stuff on the walls and we have a number of windows. So I'm not sure if it's the, if it's because it's wood floors with high ceilings. I was thinking it was more of a flooring issue. Right. It could be, you know, it could be, it's, you know, again, cause you, and I can tell just when you talk now that, that it's sort of tinny in the background, right? Right. Yeah. So, it's really big. So, yeah. So um, the, 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 the cheap thing is just try moving the mic closer. That's going to be the first thing to do anyway. Otherwise you might want to find just a different room, just play around with different rooms or, you know, or ask around or, or if you even search on YouTube for, uh, you know, like advice on how to soundproof your office or something like that, you know, right. try different so, YouTube. Um, I was working with a film crew and they had, they saw my, my boom and they were talking about the sound in here. And one suggestion that they had is putting a pillow in the front of me so that it kind of absorbed the sound a little bit and it didn't kind of echo too much. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Interesting. Awesome. Thank oh, you. There you go. There you go. Okay. Sorry, um, Tiffany, just, just to cut in here. Can you, when you say in front of you, are you talking like so here or oh here? sorry so i have like my my system is like I have three computers that go across with my, my video up above so i have a space between my desk and my monitors so they were suggesting just to kind of stick a pillow in there so i don't use like a laptop that has the webcam right in front so i have a separate one so that they were saying that just because it would just close off that space as opposed to going into the rest of my office Right. And speaking of the webcam that's built into your laptop, generally those are terrible quality. You generally will want to get an external USB webcam, you know, for decent There's some really cool Logitech ones now that it's the 930 will actually do the background removal as well inside of it. So you right. can literally set it up and just change your whole backdrop. Nice. Nice. Okay. So let's get Which back to where that, I did. Sorry. Oh, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I thought we were done. Matthew, what was that one? And Logitech it's, uh, it's by Logitech, and it's the C930. Um, there's a couple other digits, but that should get you pretty Put it in close. the chat if you can. And you then, then I'll save the chat, and I'll share all this information with everybody when I post this up on my website tomorrow. Because um, this is great stuff. These are great resources. Even, or, or Matt, send it to me after the fact. Like, just send me. And that goes for all of you. Send me any lists of any links or resources that you have. So when I publish this, everybody will have something they can refer back to and just kind of go through and, and, and again, I, for me, it's all about let's build a really cool resource for people. That's going to make it easy for everybody. That's what I'm here for. Um, so uh, your own writing, a place to get ideas. Um, again, what thing did you do recently that made you feel really good? You know, it might not even be something you did for a client specifically, but something you did that you were like, that was really cool. You know, like when I first built my template for getting Amazon sales done real quick, I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking I was going to make a product that I was going to sell on my website, but once it was done, I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. And when I showed it to my client, he was like, Seth, you should be selling that for like $400. I said, great, I'll sell it for $197, you know, and that, so now I have a, a great template that I'm selling for <laughs> half of what somebody else told me it was worth. So uh, another great place for content is Feedly. Does everybody here know what Feedly is? Feedly is a great content aggregator to create your own sort of magazine for stuff that you like to read, I believe I have it in my social links here, or I might even have it here, or I have it under communications. Yeah, there it is. One way or another, I've got my bookmarks organized. So here's Feedly. Let me just log in real quick. Feedly is, I think it did, no, Google didn't buy Feedly. Google got rid of Google Reader, which is what everybody used to use, and then everybody flocked to Feedly. But I feel like maybe Google then bought Feedly. I don't know. Anyway, so here it is. So you, you like something that you read on the web, I can aggregate all of it, right? So I have different categories on the left, news, productivity, social media, you know, so this is, you know, again, it's like my own personal online magazine that sources all the content I like to read. And it's got a great mobile app. So a lot of times first thing in the morning, instead of reading on Facebook about, about what people ate for dinner last night, I, I actually go through my Feedly feed and that's how, because I also have news feeds here. So this is where I go to sort of educate myself on what's going on in the world. A former Google employee just became one of China's richest people. Okay. I wonder if he knows Jack Ma. And if you don't know who Jack Ma is, it's because you don't read stuff like this. And you should. Um, hold on. Jack Ma is the guy who started Alibaba, which is like Europe's answer to Amazon. Um, okay. I'm having technical difficulties here with zoom there we go 
Here's the chat. Okay, so Matthew's posting the link. That's perfect. Um, so Feedly is a great way because also while I'm reading my Feedly feed, I get ideas. I'm like, you know what? That would make a great blog post, my version of that. Or, or I might create content based around my opinion about something I've read in here this morning, right? That's what it's, a lot of it's about at the end of the day is sharing your opinions. And by the way, speaking of sharing your opinions, if you're not pissing somebody off at some point, you're probably not doing your job well. So, so another, and, and I say that really to underscore the fact that don't worry about it too much. If somebody writes a scathing remark, going back to getting activity, like on your YouTube channel, I used to get so upset when people would write negative comments. And then I learned that it's actually a good thing because YouTube doesn't gauge whether the commentary is positive or negative. It just sees activity and then it's gonna, you're going to be that much more likely to show up in related video results, right? You know, those results on the side after you're watching a video when it says, oh, you, you know, here are the related videos. I had a guy come in and call me a fat F word, and I just encouraged him to keep responding. I said, how do you really feel? And he wrote back this whole long thing, and he was actually kind of funny about it, because I've learned not to take this stuff personally. And then I, uh, you know, and I just, I, I kept egging him on with like these one or two word responses. And eventually he even said, come on, fight back, you know, put me down, tell me what an a-hole I am, and so on. And I said, I am fighting back. You just haven't figured out what my game is yet. And then he wrote one more thing back, and I finally wrote back and kind of revealed what I was doing. And I said, I love you from the bottom of my keyboard. Every time you post another reply, you help my video rankings improve. You know? And then he never wrote another comment back again. <laughs> so that got rid of him finally. Um, social media, same idea. Read what others are posting. Get ideas. Write a rebuttal post. If you see something I've written, I'd love to see your version of it. And then tell me that you did it and link to it, and I promise I'll link back to you. Um, check what is trending. Right, so I can go on to Twitter. My screen is still shared here. Twitter is a great place to go to see what subjects are trending. If you go to your Twitter homepage, just twitter.com, it shows up here, trends for you. And the more you interact on Twitter, the more sort of tailored this will be to what your interests are. Right, but this might give you some ideas about things you can write. Uh, and another place to go for ideas for content is Reddit. Reddit has a terrible web browser experience, but a really good mobile app. So you can go, you can actually search Reddit for QuickBooks and see what questions people are asking about QuickBooks and then write your own content that addresses the answers to those questions, right? So check what's trending. Also Google alerts. All right, here's my Google alert email that I got today, got this morning. So of course I have it searching for my brand because I want to know about it if my brand gets mentioned anywhere on the web. So Google alerts lets me know that. And since real estate is such a hot topic for me, I have real estate accounting as another Google alert term that I use. And so I can go through this and see, I mean, this is getting huge, these private cloud environments. And so when I saw this, I said, oh, I'm intrigued by this. But it turned out this was actually just an ad, but still it gave me an idea. I'm going to start doing some research about how people may be suggesting that real estate professionals start using private cloud services, things like Abacus Next, because if that's going to be a thing, I want to get ahead of that and start writing the content and be the leader in that industry for people who want to do that. And I'm already familiar with some products they can use. And there's another thing that's getting very popular now called a thin client or a zero client, which is another way where people can get quick access to a server, much more secure than having the stuff on your own computer. And it, it removes a whole lot of IT costs, right? Matt's shaking his head. So Matt, you're, I, you're, I take it familiar with this. Yeah, I first became familiar with it when I was in the corporate world for a short bit doing staffing. And the whole point was you it's a driveless machine that you can access everything from that workstation. And when you're logging in, it's not unique to one person. So anybody can go to the thin client and use it. So if you've got a larger team, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, the, the resources can be the harder part. If you've got a large, large team, you need a bigger server. So the cost wise is going to be a little bit more, but it's generally more efficient and it's definitely much more secure. Yeah, it's going to run you maybe 65 bucks per month per user, and these services won't take less than 10 users. And a printer uses a user and uh, I think a mail server or whatever. So, so you're going to use up at least two users that aren't even people right off the bat. So, um, But it's definitely something for us as accounting professionals to be aware of because it's almost like, you know, we've gone from desktop to cloud. And then at this point, we're kind of looking at, you know, these hosted solutions as going backwards for some of us at this point. But with this idea of the thin client or zero client, it's almost coming back that way. 
and saying this is a better way because you can even you can certainly access all your SaaS products through the thinner zero client and do it more securely and you have more control because this way if I have somebody I've hired and I, and I fired them all I have to do is go into my thin client and kick them out and they they have no more access to any of it right so so there's a lot to be said about that so that and I brought that up just to say and there's your example of how I use Google Alerts to get ideas frequently I there's I, Google I, Alerts is brand new to me and I'm pretty Google centric so well, Google Alerts has been around forever Google right. Google Where Alerts um, so if you just go to, I guess it's, uh, I think it's alerts.google.com. I assume, is it, it's free, right? It is free. Yeah, it's a free part of, uh, or if you just Google, Google alerts, you'll see <laughs> it. And make sure you're signed into your Google account and you'll be able to access it. And it's really easy. Um, like here's mine. And I don't have a lot in this. I probably should spend some more time on it. But you can see I've got accounting for real estate, QuickBooks Online for real estate, and real estate accounting. And I use a, a service of, called Brand Mentions, but I have to pay for it. And what I've been able to do is for certain things like this, there's, there's a website called AppSumo, which is it's yeah. like um, a lot of startups, a lot of companies that are trying to get their product known. So you can get a lifetime deal for different products for like $49. And it's provided me a lot of really good marketing tools because I don't want to have to pay, you know, 50 bucks every single month because most of these are 50 to $200 a month yeah. to uh, for brand reputation. Yeah, and a lot of people love AppSumo. I'm familiar with that. Um, there's also a great website called uh, BuzzSumo, which gives you great research on social media and stats. Buzz, B-U-Z-Z. -Z. Uh, so do I have resources on Camtasia training? Do I ever? So uh, we're actually running out of time. So let me rip through this really quick, and I'm going to come to that. So if you can stick with me for like five more minutes, and I'll get I'm through I'm just going to say hell yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> thank you, Laura. All right. So next tools for capturing ideas. One of my favorites these days is called Dynalist. So Dynalist is, you might've heard of Workflowy. Dynalist is the new Workflowy to me. I know Adam, I had turned you on, I think to Workflow at one point, didn't I? You're muted. I use it every day. Yeah, so I've moved from Workflow to Dynalist because Dynalist is, there's more people at home, so to speak, at Dynalist. They're rolling out more updates more frequently. So you can say, um, intro to QuickBooks online for the blog post we're all going to write. And you click on the little dot there, and now I'm focused on just that one thing. And I'll say, first major topic, second, third, and so on. And this gets us into what I wanted to tell you about how to outline your content, which is that's how I do it now. I write the outline like this. I write bullet points, the high level, major subject areas. In fact, if I go into the one that I actually did on QuickBooks, here's published. I think it was called Getting Started with QuickBooks Online. I wonder what I did with it. Maybe it's not, that's weird because I, it should have been here. Um, well, let's do a different one that I recently did. Nope, not a good example. Okay, here's a good example. How transactions in QuickBooks Online impact reports. So you can see I wrote the high level bullet points first. Let me collapse all. Okay, I have checks and expenses, and then I have deposits. And within that, I had reduces bank account balance, therefore whatever goes to account line item details is debited. So I created the bullet points, and then I, I, I go like two levels deeper within each bullet point. Then I take this, drop it into a Google document, and go into each section and write the paragraph form. And before you know it, I've got a really well-structured blog post. And then I go back and say, what's my long tail keyword, which Matt mentioned, right? how transactions and QuickBooks Online impact reports. So probably really, I don't need the how in my keyword, but transactions and QuickBooks Online impact reports would be my long tail keyword that I'm going to optimize this content for. And I mentioned earlier that I was gonna mention this, the tool I use is in WordPress and it's called Yoast, like the word toast, but with a Y, and that helps you optimize your content. That's what literally made me a better writer. And I can now, if I'm writing the blog post ahead of time, knowing what my long tail keyword is, I drop it into WordPress. The Yoast is a plugin that works with WordPress, and oftentimes I'm already optimized for 
you know, readability and SEO. There's two areas that you want to optimize for. Readability means it's really easy to read. Even though we might be writing to a, 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 a more than average intelligence audience, doesn't matter. We're moving so fast that on the internet, we're typically reading at about an elementary school level just because we're moving fast, right? Unless you do something that gets our attention well enough to slow us down to really stop and focus. So, but you have to write with that in mind or you have to revise or edit your writing. So Yoast like toast, Linda says, I love toast. <laughs> I love toast too. It's always good. So, so the writing process, you write an outline in bullet point fashion, then you fill in the info. Now where to go to learn. So, and this is where I get to shamelessly self-promote. 97 and up, I have 24 lessons under the heading of how to become a content creation machine. So in, in these, these lessons are all published. Right? It starts here with the section on build your money site, of course, in WordPress. Not that you need to build your own website. In fact, I encourage you to hire a professional to do that, but you should have them do it in WordPress and know enough WordPress so that you can get in there and publish and manage your own content now that your site is built. Right? And so these lessons walk you through everything you need to know to be able to do that much. You could even take what's here and build your own website with it. But like I said, and, and that's fine if you don't have the budget to hire somebody. But my, my suggestion is hire somebody if you can afford it, and, but know enough to be able to you know, manage it yourself you know, with their help when needed. So, and here I go through even some of my favorite plugins, including Yoast SEO. And in the Yoast plugin, I walk you through the entire process. I take my content on introduction to QuickBooks Online and I optimize it right in front of you. It's like a 40 minute video because I actually show you where it's scoring me poorly and how I go through it and improve the score. And Yoast does a beautiful job. They even give you links that take you over to their blog that teach you the difference between writing in an active voice versus a passive voice. And the trick there is you, you want to minimize the amount of sentence structure that's written in a passive voice. So there's lots of great things you'll learn about Yoast SEO and I walk you through exactly how to do it. And then under how to become a content creation machine, I teach you literally how to write a blog post, taking what I just described, how to write the outline and expanding on it, again, going through it very slowly and building on it until we get it into the post and optimize it using Yoast SEO. So you'll see Yoast again here in this section, how to use Yoast to optimize your writing. I think this is the one that's actually like a 40 minute to an hour video that really walks you through how to get a green light for both SEO and readability. Readability refers to what's called a flesh reading test, F-L-E-S-C-H, which just refers to the difficulty level. And it will help you get a higher score on that. The higher the score, the easier it is to read. Uh, I'll teach you how to create and edit your online videos. You don't need to know a lot of fancy editing tricks. Really, all you need to know how to do is zoom in and out so you can show the, 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 the viewer what you want them to focus on and also eliminate any distractions that might be elsewhere on your screen. That's really the trick to editing videos in Camtasia is zooming in and focusing on what you want them to pay attention to, zooming out at the right times to give them context so they don't lose sight of where you were or how you got there. You know, there's a balance there. And don't do it too frequently because you don't want your viewers getting nauseous in the process, right? And so I walk you through the whole range. So that's part of my 97 and up course. And if you want to get in and don't want to pay $197 a month because I had increased the price, then just use the code 97insider and you'll get it for $97 a month. And of course, then we have the twice weekly calls also where you can come in like Adam had done in the past and say, here, I've got a video. Help me edit the video. And the whole group of us will chime in and help you edit that video. It's kind of awesome, actually, if I may say so myself. Uh, where do you sign up? So just go to nerdenterprises.com right on my website, and it's under subscription-based training. And then scroll to the bottom, and you'll see uh, the different plans I have. But the one you want, of course, is the 97 and up all access and the coupon code is the number 97 and the word insider 97 insider and that gets you access to all the courses on the site every piece of content everywhere and the twice weekly calls and we have the private slack workspace and if you come into the slack workspace laura will teach you all about pickleball <laughs> so uh, Boston Slack. Kidding aside, once you get in, this is your course that's written just for you. This is the course I was just referring to is Accounting Business Academy, my 97 and up project. So you click in here and here's where all those lessons are that I was telling you about. Of course, I encourage you to run through them all in order, starting from the beginning 
because I have a whole series of exercises on time management that have proven to be really good and setting goals. But as you scroll down the list of lessons here, you'll find all the ones I just showed you on WordPress and how to create content. And of course, once you're in, if you have trouble finding anything, don't spend more than five seconds trying. Just get into Slack and ask me and I'll guide you where you need to go. That's what I'm here for. All right, anybody else, any questions? Let me look at the uh, registration sign-up questions people asked. Uh, where do you go to get ideas? We talked about that. Uh, Linda says, love this topic. Have YouTube videos, but not enough. Blocking my calendar. Excellent, glad you were here. Marriott says, how awesome are you? I don't know, Marriott, you tell me. Tell me, go on. Lisa didn't even show up. She was like so hot on this. Um, and what do I say are the positive and negative uh, negatives between live streaming on Facebook and YouTube? So that's actually a great question. That was your question, Matthew. Um, honestly, I, the reason I go live on Facebook rather than YouTube, and I haven't even looked at our Facebook feed this morning. I'm so sorry, Facebook friends. I have not even looked. I will look now. The reason I go live on Facebook is because I feel that's more targeted. YouTube has a lot more people but I think it's untargeted, it's unfocused. Facebook, I have a community of people who are regularly you know, in touch with me, and so that's why I choose to, because I could choose to take these Zooms live on YouTube and probably reach more people, but it's like we've been talking about a lot in 97 and up in terms of marketing. If you market to everyone, you may as well market to no one, right? So that's, what, that's in a nutshell why I prefer to go through Facebook uh, instead of YouTube. Oh, Lisa did show up. I'm sorry, Lisa. Now I see you in the Facebook feed. I was looking for you in the actual panel here in Zoom. I was looking forward to seeing your lovely face. Um, what else? Lisa says, I love this idea of a welcome to QuickBooks blog post. Yes, let's all do that. Don't forget. And I'm so sorry I ignored the Facebook feed this morning. I didn't mean to. I just got so into it. Carmen says, Seth, so cool to have learned Camtasia from you. Carmen has actually hired me for one-on-one, -on -one, and I've worked with her one-on-one. -on -one, and I was so excited because I was so excited to help her uh, to learn how to make videos so she could make them in Spanish to help the Spanish-speaking community learn how to use QuickBooks. I, thought, I think that's so cool and so important. And now she's working with Mariette and uh, Vanessa um, doing their whole, you know, bringing their sort of Spanish QuickBooks related content to the Hispanic and Latino community, which I think is just awesome. And last Friday, they made me officially a Latina. I get to, I'm now, a, I've been dubbed a Latina, not a Latino, Latina, because they said that Latinas were the fastest growing segment of the uh, small business uh, economy. So I said, well, I want to get in on that. So, so they said I could be a Latina. Um, Carmen says zero server. What is the name of? So Carmen, if you just Google or just reach out to myself or Matthew, we can kind of point you in the direction of how to get more information about it. But if you just Google zero or thin client, you'll see a ton of information about that stuff. Okay. And it looks like that's it. It sounds like Larry is uh, excited about Google alerts. I did a video on Google alerts a ways back, uh, in terms of how to use it for a marketing tool, because the other thing you can do with it, by the way, is if you see, uh, using Google Alerts that somebody's posted in a forum somewhere a question about QuickBooks and you have or you can go create a blog post that answers that question so you just bookmark that that post in that forum go create the content or go grab the link if it's already created jump into the forum and then give them the link and say hey I have this wonderful blog post that answers your question always give them a helpful answer before just linking to your blog post otherwise it's gonna feel spammy to people so start off with maybe an excerpt from your blog post or something that gives them something useful and then say and if you want more here's a link to a blog to an, a whole blog post I've written about the subject all right so we are at about 10 past the hour any more questions before I wrap it up I'm going to post all of my notes and I'm going to save the chat um, and I'm going to do that now. So if you have more resources that you want to share that you think will be useful, please send them to me and I will make sure they get published. And of course, I will give you credit and link back to your website uh, and say, you know, here's the stuff that Matthew submitted. You can find Matthew's information on his website. You know, so just give me the information. I'll make sure people know where it came from. And I'll make this a great resource for people to come back to once I have it posted on my website, which should happen at some point tomorrow. And of course, you all know how to reach me and find me if you have more follow-up questions directly. Just come into the Facebook group, hang out with us, talk to us, get in on the conversation. And thank you. Thank you. This was really, really helpful. This, I got some great ideas out of this. Cool. I'd love to, I'd love to hear more.
let's talk. Let's meet for, um, we got to meet at Brent's Deli. Yes, yes. Okay, we'll make a plan. Okay. All right. By the way, everybody, Matthew lives kind of near me. We had an amazing dinner conversation recently. I almost caused Matthew to miss his flight to New York. <laughs> it would have been worth it. It's okay. It totally would have been worth it. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. All right, everybody. Don't forget Genius Hangouts later today. SBAA Small Business Accounting Advisors on Facebook. Join her group. Join her chat. It's always sure to be fun. And I will see you all on the other side. I'm heading off to my co-working space next to record another podcast from the Authentic Accountant episodes.